Hello everyone. My name is Michelle Christian and this is my short short story for WK1, my project for basic storytelling. Starts out funny story I could think of. This is really hard to think of a lot of funny stories, but one person comes in mind. White boy. Now, this video is explaining who White Boy is a little bit further into detail. It starts out in a yard sale on a hot August afternoon. At first, I didn't want to go to the yard sale. Shelly asked me, Anthony, and my son Brandon to go help set her up, set up the yard sale in her apartment. The yard sale was in the parking lot because she don't have a yard. Basically, when you walk out the front of her apartment, the only thing you see is a parking lot. She don't have no back grass. She don't have no front grass. It's just a parking lot. Kind of boring to look at. So she wanted to sell some items from her son and her daughter. And all of a sudden, the local nut, white boy, comes up. Starts scanning the tables. Everything's set up starts scanning the tables, he sees this child's teenage mutant ninja turtle mask and a cape. And he proceeds to put those things on. Now, he's about five, nine, six foot. So he puts this mask on, okay? And mask only hits his nose. It's only about up to here on him. And a little Superman cape well, if you can use your imagination, it doesn't fit either. So, he makes it fit. <laughs> he does, he makes it fit. But, he puts that on, he puts the cape on. Then he gets on his BMX bike. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in this story, it was my other son, BMX bike. He was riding around the parking lot. So he gets on there. Rides around that parking lot. And all of a sudden you hear him say, I come to save the day. Just riding around. Everybody around the yard sale is like, What's going on? What kind of is he on something? <laughs> At least that's what you think they're thinking. And then Anthony decides to pull out his camera on his phone start filming. So he does. White boy is not afraid of a camera. Not unlike me. I hate cameras. But getting back to the story. He gets up, sees that he's being filmed, so he uses this as an example to get even more crazier. Okay. He gets up to the camera. I've got to protect the people of Hanover from evil doings. Why he's wearing this Teenage Mutant Ninja mask and the cape on his back. Then a little after a while, a little later, about 15 minutes go by, and he drops the BMX bike to the ground, then proceeds to run back out to the parking lot, grabs a little bit of the cape, pretends he's Superman, and flies around. You know, we we just pretends that he's like literally Superman and he's flying around. At this point, we're all like giggling, laughing hysterical of the whole situation. It gets better, trust me, don't go anywhere. It gets better. Anyway, we weren't getting a lot of people coming into the yard sale. So about mid-afternoon, starts getting hot, everybody's melting and dying, so they all hibernate under the friggin' gazebo they put up uh, to keep themselves shaded. And he comes back again, scans the tables, just like he did the first time around. Scans the tables. This time, he grabs a sundress puts it on him over his clothes and then picks up a straw 
sun hat that has like a tie that goes underneath your neck. Really pretty pink tie. He puts that on his head. This was a little while later after Shelly asked for him and Brandon to go up front to try to get some more customers. Shelly goes up front to Baltimore Street and there's a business right out front. And he stood kind of to the side, like off to the curb, where the, where the curb and the street meet. And he's doing everything he can. He's waving people down and trying to get people to come into the yard sale. Come to the yard sale. Go to this business over here. Get some, you know, try to do everything he can possible to not only generate business for the, the business he was standing next to, but also to get yard sale, people coming into the yard sale. So he's doing, he's jumping up and down. He's making all kinds of noises. Then he proceeds to reach down his leg, pull up part of the dress, stick his leg out, literally where he's showing the skin in front of public, wave his leg around, to try to like get people to come in even more. And believe me, it worked. It really worked. Um, so, during this time, him jumping up and down, making a fool of himself in, in public, cars going by, people honking, saying, white boy, white boy. Now mind you, this guy's very popular in Hanover. He's very, very popular. Some things for good reasons, some for not. The lady in the business was taking her camera and filming him acting like a fool. Okay. She was laughing hysterical. Everybody that I know of that was watching him out front was laughing hysterical. I was laughing hysterical. All of a sudden, cops were called. Okay. One cop comes out, strolls up to him, okay, with trying to hold back as much laughter as he possibly can because he literally looked like he was going to bust out and laugh hysterically himself. Trying to keep a professional demeanor, he holds it back, walks up to white boy, and says to his face, white boy, why are you wearing a dress? White boy stands back, proceeds to put his hands on his hips, looks directly into the cop's eyes, and says, cause I'm good like that. Now, cop, Still remaining with composure, very hard, but he's still remaining his composure. Tells the white boy, all right, white, I say, Chris, okay, but you can't do this in front of the business, okay? You can do this somewhere else, but you can't do it in front of her business. White boy understood. So, he was still in the street, but he moved further down so that he wouldn't be in her business or interview for being... I guess it would be considered loitering or something or whatever the case may be. I don't know. But she got business just because of him standing out there just in drag. You know, she got business. Yard sale got business. So buddy, nobody really understands why. But it's just a typical day if you know white boy. Okay. And he comes down, and there's a lot more, a lot more people coming to Shelly's yard sale. So he did generate a, quite a bit of business, not only for Shelly's yard sale, but also for the local business he was standing in front of. Um, pretty much, what I gotta say is, it's hard to write a. 250 to 350 page story about this man because 
basically, if I could tell you all the details that he has done, and there's many, many more funny things that he has done that I've witnessed in my life, it would probably fill a novel. And being limited, I'm doing what I can to discuss what this really was about. The only thing I can say is you had to really be there. You had to really experience this kind of behavior. And you wouldn't believe it, but all I can say is that, you know, I'm happy that I actually witnessed this and many more. But hopefully some point in my schooling I can actually talk more about White Boy because he's always wanted to be famous anyway. So hopefully I'll have that opportunity in this class or maybe in my future classes to discuss a little bit more about him if a funny story comes up. But that's my little story and I hope you enjoyed it. It is a little long and I'm sorry that this presentation is a little long but like I said, White Boy is in a class by himself, a mold by himself, and he cannot really be classified either as an extrovert or an introvert because he's a different type of human being. Um, hopefully I can get to talk more and discuss more in the future about this. But that's my story for this project, and I hope you enjoy it. So I will sign off by saying this was White Boy in the Garage Sale, and I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.